Disaster has struck. That's right, the T5 is dead again. Now, luckily for me, this happened, or it started to go wrong at the end of my street. That's right, I've left a massive trail all down the road, leading right back to my van on my driveway outside my house. Now, it's good news that I made it home, so I'm not stranded on the side of the road somewhere, but it means I've got to fix it at home and not in the comfort of the barn. Now, you'll know from the title of the video exactly what's wrong. We're going to tackle it on the driveway at home, so this should be something you can do too. Right, so before we get started, remember to like this video. It really does help let everyone know what we're doing here with the T5. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. You'll see lots more updates on the T5, but also all of the other antics we get up to up the barn. And again, it really, really does help grow the channel. So with that said, let's have a look and see what the problem is. Now the van was driving absolutely fine. Ironically, I'd just done an oil change on the van and it was running like a dream. But I got to the end of my road, didn't really notice anything. Pulled up on my driveway, didn't notice anything. Got out my van and all of a sudden, there's a big old streak down the road. Now, if that's not embarrassing enough, it then leaked out all over my driveway. Now, having looked at it, it looks like the tandem pump or the vacuum pump on the side of the cylinder head has failed. Now, you can buy repair kits for these, but to be fair, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> just for me it's a lot easier especially here on my driveway just to order a new pump get it fitted and then go about my way in the van so as you can see with the tires in the back of the van we're getting ready for another video getting the mini sorted for a track day but sadly the tires are still here the mini's still in the barn so first things first we've got to tackle this now the tandem pump sits on the side of the engine and it does two jobs tandem two so the first thing is it gives you your brake pressure and secondly it's your fuel pump so it's quite important and i didn't see the point in rebuilding this one i thought do you know what it's 15 pounds for a rebuild kit or it's 125 for a new pump and in the grand scheme of things let's just stick a new one on so of course I went to my friends at Max Peeding Rods and they do a tandem pump for the 2.5 TDI Volkswagen engine that is in this T5 transporter van. Now this pump's 125 pounds, but using the code BarnClub22, you can get a 10% discount. So the pump itself isn't massive. And as we just take it out, I'll pop it on the seat here. It's quite well packaged. And you can see that it's even oiled in the bag as well. And with these holes here, I think the top two are a, oh, I want to say they're an T40, M40, and the bottom one is a 10 mil bolt. And then in terms of the hoses that go onto it, we've got a push fit uh, vacuum hose for the brake booster or the brake pressure. Uh, we've then got a, just a push fit hose as well. And we've got a 17... Yeah, we've got a 17 mil um, for the high pressure fuel line as well. So arguably, we've got three hoses to take off and we've got three bolts to undo and we can get this swapped over. Is it gonna be that easy? Let's have a look. First things first, let's pop the bonnet. Now that's the tandem pump right down there behind this pipe coming off of the EGR. But I think what we need to do is remove the expansion tank. It's just two uh, Phillips screws. And then we're going to unclip this pipe from the EGR as well. That way it should give us some easy access to get onto the pump and get this taken off. And as I said, this is being all done with just my trusty Halfords tool kit and a pair of pliers. So as I make a start undoing these Phillips screws to give us a bit more access. And again, hoping it's not a particularly taxing job and it's definitely something you can do on your driveway at home without really any specialist tools. Right, so I've undone the two Phillips. I've taken one of the hoses off and the other one I'm hoping I can just wiggle the bottle out of the way. So to undo the clips on the EGR hose, it is just lever this up. And so with a screwdriver, just to pull that out, that pipe will just come off the top and we need to repeat the same again down the bottom. Right, with that pipe out of the way, you've got much better access. You might want to think about plugging this pipe up just because it leaks everywhere as you can see it's made a right old mess down here so not only have i got years of old oil to contend with it's now wet so again first world problems so if you look at here what we've got is we've got this 
should just pull off. We've got that there, which we'll just need to use the pliers, or if you've got a fancy hose clip tool, like the one I've got at the barn, then you can just pull that off, no problem. And then last of all is the 17 mil for the high pressure fuel line that you can see just there. So that's a 17 mil. So if you attack that with a spanner, should come off no drama. So I'll make a start with this one. There you go, that one just pulls off. And now we've got this one and the 17. So is this the type of job you'd tackle on your driveway or is this the type of thing you'd leave for a professional? I personally couldn't be bothered to get this recovered to take it back to the barn. I thought it's the type of job I could just tackle here on my driveway with you guys. Let me know down in the comments if this is the type of thing that you do on your drive at home. Now, even with the hose clip off, this pipe isn't playing ball. So just a little wiggle with a set of pliers to free it off and hopefully I should be able to pull that off. Time to go with the 17 and we need to get that fuel line off. And then that's all the lines removed from this. It's just those three bolts to go. So because we're upside down, it means that to undo it, you're pulling it towards the engine. There we go. Now, hopefully with that cracked off, I can do that by hand. Yeah, there we go. So this comes with a new metal gasket. And if you look, we've got three bolt holes. So we've got two here and then there's one here. So we need to look on the pump to track these down in the engine bay. Now the top two are M40. Now the last one is a 10 mil, I believe, but it is right at the bottom. So I'm gonna have to get my torch out, have a look for it and touch wood should just pop out. Right, and with those three bolts out, you've got the pump. So you can see this is an original Volkswagen Audi pump made by LUK. And today we're gonna to replace it with this part from Max Peeding Rods. There's a link in the description for this particular pump. And of course, using the code BarnClub22 gets you 10% off site-wide. Now on the underside of the pump, we've got the, uh, the drive there, which goes into the end of the cam, and which is what turns it around. Basically gotta do the reverse of this to get the pump back in. And now that's all back together. So the pump is attached to the side of the head. Three pipes are back on. The coolant tank's back in place. Boost hose back on. It's all buttoned up. Now, I need to just top up the coolant a little bit because I dribbled a bit on the floor. But other than that, it should be ready to start. So fingers crossed there is enough juice left in the battery to get this fired up today. I'm gonna need to crank it a couple of times to build up the fuel pressure but hopefully it's not gonna to be too much. Now I've got a power cut at home just to make matters worse. So if this doesn't start, I'm not gonna be able to get this battery charged up today. So I'm gonna to have to wait until tomorrow to find out the fate of my van. So let's put the key in the ignition. Well, that's, that's a good start. That's the fuel pump primed. Oh. Just my luck. So, guys, I'm gonna have to uh, gonna have to come back to this in the morning. Some time later. It's been a couple of days, one fully charged battery, and a haircut later. I think we're ready to give this another go. So fingers crossed, we're gonna be all right this time. Okay, so far, so good. It looks like the van is running, that's a start, but it always was running. Am I running diesel all over my driveway? That's the question. Let's get out and take a look. So the answer is no, it doesn't look like we are. That's the old stuff, what a mess. Right, with it running, I think the first thing we need to do is get this to a petrol station. We have got next to no fuel. Now it might be because we're parked on a slope, but to be fair, there's a good chance that most of that leaked out all over that slope. So let's get this off the drive and to a petrol station. 
and hopefully we've got the van working. So far, so good. That's right, there is no big streak of diesel out the back of the van, so I think we're good. With this new pump from Max Peeding Rods, I think we've, uh, we've got nothing to worry about. The van seems to be running perfectly and I'm not leaking fuel all over the road. So I guess what's next? This wasn't the video I was planning to kick off 2024 with, but it happens. So what would you like to see more of this year? Do you wanna see more how-to videos? And I say how-to videos, it's really just me having a go up the barn with some tools and maybe asking Sam for help. So do you wanna see more on this van? I was looking at converting this to a camper last year, so I think that definitely needs to happen in 2024. Or do you wanna see more Jetta content or Mark II Golf content? We've just bought that Nevada Beige Jetta Coupe and we really do need to have a proper go through that and get it up and running nicely for the shows later this year. So if you wanna see more Mark II videos, let me know. We've got enough of them in the barn to keep us going for a while. Or are you here for the mini videos? Yep, that's right, we've got the Mini Cooper S that we were hoping to get ready for a track day in March. Fingers crossed it's gonna make it, but again, we'll have an update video on that car coming soon as well. So look, thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. It really does mean a lot. Obviously, I see some subscribers come, I see some subscribers go. So if you're here watching this video, thank you ever so much for being a massive part of Barn Club. It really does mean a lot. Now I'm just coming up to the petrol station. So I guess this is a good time for me to say, guys, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.